Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. Guess what? We're still building the calculator. This is part three of my Let's Build a Calculator series. So let's, uh, let's go build a calculator. Um, before you continue, if you haven't watched parts one and two, go watch those first. You'll find links down below. In part one, we built all the basics, got everything up and running and working, and learned about the evaluate function. And in part two, we added some error handling and some other nifty features. So go watch those parts first if you haven't yet. Okay, here we go. All right, so the first thing I want to do is I want to make it so that the users can easily back up if they typed in something wrong. Like I just typed, oop, I typed in 556985, and I meant to type in a four there. So now I got to, what do I got? I'll clear it and start all over again. Okay, 556984. Five, be nice we had a little back button, right? Really easy to do. Now, in order to do that, what I have to basically do is look at this string and say, okay, I want to back up, so I want to erase the last one. So essentially, I want to take the left five characters off of that six character string. So I need to know how long that string is first, right? Because it could be longer, it could be shorter. So I need to know the length of that string. That's the len function, L-E-N for length. And then I want to take the left number of characters off of that string right? Minus one. So if it's 10 characters long, I want the left nine characters. All right, so we need two functions for this, left and len for length. To learn more about these types of functions, I have a whole separate video on string functions. We cover left, we cover length, and there's other ones too. There's right, which is the same thing. It gets the right side of the string. Mid pulls, strings, pulls stuff out of the middle of a string. And then there's in string to determine if there's something inside of another string. There's also in string reverse, which is a whole different ball of beans. Go watch this if you want to learn more about string functions. But we only need two of them right now. I think we'll need right a little bit later. But left, left is the biggie, and len is also a very, very big one. All right, so let's start by making our back button. Just copy one of these guys, right? Copy, paste, slide you right there. Um, what do you want for the back symbol? Something like that, maybe? You can go in, you can find a picture if you want to put a picture on a button. There's all kinds of things you can do. Let's make those a little bit smaller. Let's go down to maybe like 16. 20. Yeah, that looks good. That's our back button. All right. So we don't need this in here because we're not adding to that string. And let's make sure we give it a good name. Button, back, space, like that. That's fine. All right. Right click, build event. We're in here. So here we're going to say the calc is going to be equal to the left of calc, how many characters? I want the left n minus one. What is n? n is the length of the string, so it's going to be length of calc minus one. See how that works? Left takes two bits of information, right? Left takes the string and the length. So if you want the left one, you go left calc comma one. If you want the left three, you go length or a uh, left calc minus or calc comma three i can't talk today not enough coffee yet folks all right so we want the length of the string minus one from the left side of that and one more thing we are going to add an on error resume next now this is okay it's okay it's just one line of code in here if that thing generates an error just skip out and the reason why we're not putting proper error handling in here is because if they don't have anything in the string then that will generate an error and we don't really want to see that so Save that, close it, save it, open it, right? If I hit this now, I just it, it would generate an error because there's nothing in that string. So length of n minus one would be negative one, which no, okay? But if I put in a bunch of stuff and I hit the back button, look at that, isn't that cute? Oops, that's a mistake, back, 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 back. See, that's all. But we don't want to we don't want to put error in there if you keep back up past that. So just leave it. It's blank. That's good. Okay. Okay. Another thing you might want to do is raise a number to a power. Okay. Now there's a couple different things we can do. We can make an x squared button, which just squares it, or we can add the caret symbol that allows you to actually do numbers to a power. Remember, you can type in here, right? So if I go two caret two, that's two to the second power equals four. All right. If I go ten caret three, that's 10 to the third power equals a thousand, right? So you can give the user the caret if you want to, like a donkey with a caret, right? Copy paste that, we'll stick that right down here and we'll just replace that with a caret. 
All right, and this one could be, um, let's say, button power. PWR is fine. And this one can use that event because all we're doing literally is just adding a caret to the thing. But you might also, for ease of sake, you might also want to make a button that just squares what's in there, what's, what's in the thing. You hit the X squared button and boom, it squares it for you. All right, so let's put a button right next to that one that just takes what's in there and just squares it like a, like a shortcut. All right, copy, paste. We'll put it right there. And in this one, we're gonna type in X. Now, I would like the little, the little, the, the little superscript that goes next to it. I don't, wanna, I don't wanna put that in the button, right? I wanna put, let's put in there that. Oh, how'd you do that? Well, there's an extended set of characters that you can use if you know how to type in the extended ASCII characters. Now I'm just gonna open up Notepad real quick just to show you these. Where are they? Come here. Come here. Where's Notepad? There's Notepad. Okay, so if I type in, if I hold down the Alt key on your keyboard on the left side, hold down the Alt key, and then type in from the numeric keypad, type in 253 and let everything go. Boom, there's your square. See that? There's a bunch of cool ones. We're gonna learn some more in a minute for like division and multiplication and all that stuff. All right, so it's Alt-253. How do I know it's Alt-253? Well, I Googled it. <laughs> there's a chart, Google ASCII chart, and there's a, there's a bunch of them. Just pick any one of these. and You'll get a whole list of all the different characters that are available, right? There's all the numbers. There's extended characters. This one doesn't have all the cool ones on it. Yeah, like this one's got all the cool ones. Like here's 253. It's a little superscript two, right? There's the radical for that. That's 251. We'll use that in a minute. There's the division sign, 246. Okay. All right. So now that we know that trick, we can go Alt 253 in there. And there's my little square, right? And since this button is going to take whatever is in there and instantly do something to it, we're going to make that a red button, right? All our red buttons just change what's in there. Okay. What are we going to call this guy? Let's call it button square, B-T-N-S-Q-R, and we don't need that event procedure. We gotta do some stuff. All right, so in our on-click event, how are we gonna handle squaring this thing now? Well, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna say, let's put parentheses around the whole thing, and then we'll add the caret to ourselves and then evaluate it, right? Makes sense? So we'll say calc equals, we'll put calc inside parentheses like that, okay? And then we'll put the caret two after it, and then we'll evaluate the whole thing. Now to evaluate the whole thing, we could just call button equals click, but like I said before, it's better to make this its own subroutine. So what we're gonna do is right here, I'm gonna do this, watch, I'm gonna say private, sub do calc all right now all of this stuff has now turned into do calc we got this guy hanging around up here so watch this and sub and inside of you will say do calc so the button equal click is now going to call do calc which now means that other people can call do calc too so i can change that guy and then come right down here and say do calc See, so behind the scenes, we're gonna add the parentheses in the caret two and then do calc and this guy handles all the error handling and all the rest of that stuff. Make sense? See how that? See how I did that? I'm modifying the thingy, right? Modifying the calc box and then just immediately calculating it. That's what the red buttons do. Okay, save it. Little debug compile action. Come out here, close it, open it. All right, nine plus six, everything's working fine so far, okay. 15 squared, boom, 225. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. How far can we go? Oh, there we go, we get too big. There is a limit. <laughs> okay. One thing I also wanted to add in here is I do want to say, because this will come up handy in the future, I'm going to say if is null calc, then exit sub. What does that mean? Well, if there's nothing in there, if it's blank, don't even bother with the rest of this stuff, okay? Want to learn more about null? I got a whole video on null, is null, the null functions, null values. There's lots of null. There's, for it being nothing, there's lots about it. Lots to learn about nothing. 
<laughs> All right, so there we go. We got a back button now. We got, we can raise to any power, right? Or we can quickly square something that's in the window there. Lots more to come, folks. All right, we're gonna do our little obligatory end of lesson change. Let's go with like pink this time. Pick one that works. Okay, that looks beautiful. And now we're looking like that. All righty, that's part three. And members, just so you're aware, uh, at the end of the series, there's going to be an extended cut with lots of cool extra stuff that I've been saving up a list for because people have been posting in the forums for some suggestions for this thing. So at the end, we're going to have an extended cut with lots of cool members only stuff. So don't worry about that. All right. That's your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member, and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free access level one course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You could find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours, go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward, <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two, it's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. 
Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.